Yikes. Hey guys, welcome to the Attainable Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Boss. I'm super glad that you're here. Um, if you're new here, hello, my name is Sarah. I'm your new best friend. I've been recently coined as the internet grandma, which is pretty neat. Take that as you will. Um, let's see, I'm an ex-chemist turned creative. That's kind of like a long story. We can get into that later, honestly. Um, but I'm super glad. I'm super glad that you're here right now. You listening to this. I'm super glad that you are here and we are best friends. I'm your internet grandma and it is a fabulous time. Uh, today, well, we, here's the thing. I've been getting a lot of messages uh, about saving money, budgeting tips, like all that kind of stuff. Um, since the internet has found out that I'm cheap. Um, so I wanted to talk about that a little bit, talk about kind of like how, uh, we as a generation are those like millennials or like late Gen Z's have been taught about money. Um, and then how that has sort of affected the way that we do our spending and the way that we do our budgeting. Budgeting tends to be a word that we don't really like. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that. If you're watching on Spotify, hello. I'm I'm super excited for the Spotify listeners, guys, that you guys can actually watch me. Um, I will be like looking over at my notes because I have so much to share that I wanted to be organized. Um, I don't typically do that. So I'm feeling pretty proud of myself there. But anyway, let's jump into it. I know that usually rambling, like not something that people love. So we're going to jump right in. Um, like I was talking about. So our generation as millennials, like late Gen Z. Uh-oh. Okay. My document is like lost. Okay. Yeah. You know, it'll be fine. So like I was saying, you know, our generation, like millennials, late Gen Z, I was born 1997 to give you like a perspective of where I'm at. Um, but we were hounded on by the parents who were going, like went through the 2008 recession, you know what I mean? And our relationship with money tends to be like a little whack. You know, we grew up on the Dave Ramsey quotes and being reprimanded for buying a nice coffee. And it's just, I think, I don't know. When I talk about money with people my age, it's a really interesting conversation. And I started my financial journey pretty early um, with my grandfather. He's taught me a lot of, about finances and he took me to go get my Roth IRA at, I think like 16 years old. So I've been saving for my retirement since then um, and have been saving since I was about 14. I understood like the concept of a savings account. And that's where I got really obsessive with like the numbers game. I realized like, oh, if I keep my spending down per month, then I can dump the rest of it in my savings account. And it became like a game, like how much could I save? How much could I like hoard into this account? Now, I'm not saying like that's like the best behavior, you know, like I'm not, I'm not encouraging that. However, that did sort of set me up for some really good financial habits and then set the tone for my spending habits in the future. When I went to college, um, I, it was the first time that I had to like buy groceries and the, yeah, it, I didn't like the fact that I had to spend money on something I knew I would be going back in a week to, to buy because I had to, I was going to eat it. Like I hated that. Um, again, I'm not saying that that's like, that's, that's unhealthy. Like I've now realized that grocery shopping is kind of a necessity for life, but I do think that maybe like some of the things that I'm saying, some of you guys can relate to, um, in one way or the other. Um, and so with that in college, I was realizing, okay, like it's not the things that like the small iced coffees or like whenever like I need to buy clothing, that wasn't the thing that was eating my budget. That wasn't the thing that was keeping me from saving the money I wanted to. It was the things I was having to buy over and over and over again. When I went and got my, you know, if I skipped Starbucks that day, it did not automatically make me a millionaire, which is honestly insulting. And I was like, that's not what's taking up that the expenses, that's not what's keeping me from dumping my money into my Roth IRA or my savings account or anything like that. It's these things that I'm having to go back and buy every single month. That was what was making the difference. So seeing that, it caused me to look at my monthly expenses and say, okay, like, 
basically how can I hack my way into a lifestyle that fits like exactly to me? I don't want to feel guilty for buying clothes. You know, I like to buy clothes. I wasn't buying it every month, but I, you know, how can I hack? I was like, okay, I want to, I want to spend my money on clothes. I don't want to spend my money on groceries that, that cost more than I know they should. So I was like, okay, how can we hack our way through this? So here's what we're going to do. When we're talking about this, we're going to end guilt budgeting and we're going to start smart budgeting. We spend our money on the things that we want to spend our money on and we're smart about the things that we don't want to spend our money on. That's the point here. So if you're wanting to save more money, uh, the small things aren't what you really need to be worried about. Now, spending habits, unhealthy spending habits, that's not what we're talking about, okay? Um, No, you're fine. I was like, oh my God, is something happening? Oh, no, no, it's good. I also lost my place. No, as I was talking, I lost my place. So I was like, I need to stop anyway. So if you're wanting to spend more money, it's not the small things that you need to pay attention to. Now, I'm not talking about unhealthy spending habits. I'm trusting that you can... Uh, identify when there is an unhealthy spending habit. What I'm talking about is I'm we're not going to feel guilty for the iced coffees. We're not going to feel guilty for going out to dinner with our friends every once in a while. Instead, we're going to look at our big purchases. Take a look at our monthly budget. What is honestly like, look at what is taking up that the money. It's the mortgage or the rent payment or the car payment, the gas, the groceries, those type of things. So it's like, okay, these are the things that we need to live, which, but we control how how we live. We control what we want to spend our money on. So how can we manipulate this in a way that serves us? You know, we're not penny pinching. Like I live a fabulous lifestyle. Um, that sounded like it was very bougie. I, I live a lifestyle where I'm comfortable. I'm not like penny pinching, but I also am, I'm spending my money again on things I want to spend my money on. So how can we keep those expenses to a place that doesn't seem unnecessary? Like we're not looking at our grocery bill and being like, oh my gosh, like I didn't want to spend $120 on that. I don't think I needed to spend $120 on that. Okay. Yeah. We don't want to do that. So how can we manipulate it in that way? So now as you're looking at your monthly spending, if, if there's something on there, that's not a necessity, but it's consistently coming onto your monthly bill, Um, that's when we start to look at like, okay, how can we have better spending habits? If you, there's no guilt here. This is just kind of a way of looking at it. If you realize that, uh, your Starbucks bill is $75 a month, every single month, that's now becoming a bill, not a treat. You know what I mean? So that's when we take a look at that. Okay. Here are like the extra things that maybe we want to realign. We're not going to care if we went to Starbucks twice and spent $11 or like whatever. We do care if consistently we're seeing these come up where you might as well have a subscription. So the whole point of this perspective is actively choosing what you're going to spend your hard-earned money on. Like we, um, when Joseph moved down and we were looking at houses, uh, we decided, okay, at for our situation, it made sense to buy a house because uh, we were like throwing rent money away. And we bought a house that was under our budget because we recognized, okay, just because we can buy it doesn't mean we should. That's literally all living below your means is. It's just because you can doesn't mean you should. And as you're you know, as you know, we start making more money, that doesn't mean that we increase our lifestyle to coordinate with that. You know, if we get a 10% raise or one of us gets a 10% raise, 15% raise, our lifestyle still stays where it is. So then, you know, if you're like, where, well, what are you doing with all the money? I don't want to work forever. Oh, no. I don't, I don't plan on doing that. Um, I want to like live my life. So we are hoping to retire early. You know, you might want to put your money into a savings account for something else. You might also want to be like saving for retirement, whatever. But that allowed us to keep, again, those monthly expenses low. So now let's talk about like, we've talked about kind of the mindset behind all that type of thing. Uh, Here are some things that we've enacted, um, general like tips or rules or things that we've done to like keep costs down. Are all of these going to be for you? Probably not, but some of them might be helpful. 
So first thing, um, I was actually talking to a friend this week and she had a term. I was explaining to her how, how I grocery shop and I had never heard like this phrase before, but, uh, she was like, oh, you shop the perimeter. I was like, what? But it's true. So when I go grocery shopping, I very rarely go through those middle aisles. Um, I always called it like trying to avoid packaging. Um, Of course, things come in packages like milk comes in a package. But what I'm saying is like chips, crackers, cookies, those type of things that are in pre packaged stuff like we don't really buy a lot of that stuff. Um, Joseph is type one diabetic. So we have like a standard, um, some things that we consistently keep, uh, like we have juice boxes and then fruit snacks for when he goes low and we kind of need that. Um, but other than that, we're not shopping in those middle aisles and it's called shopping the perimeter. And that is a great way to save money. Our, our grocery bill goes towards dairy. It goes towards, um, like a, a lot of produce, um, and those type of things. So that's something to keep in mind as you're going through the the, as you're going, next time you're in the grocery store, see how often, like how much time you're spending outside, like on the perimeter and how much time you're spending inside, um, in those middle aisles. Another thing that we try to do, um, and this, you know, not always possible, but it's kind of like, if we can, uh, we save up to pay for cars in cash. Um, now of course, like right now we're currently saving for a car. So if one of our cars goes down, we probably, we have to like take a car payment, but we try to avoid car payments because it's, again, I don't want to give my money to somebody for an interest rate. I just hate it. It's just, it's annoying. Like the, my, I would rather money be in my pocket and uh, we buy used cars because when you drive a car off a lot, it just loses so much value that it doesn't really make sense for us. Is that for everybody guys? I know like that might be like a controversial point. It's not for everybody. I'm just saying like, this is something that we do we buy good used cars and we pay for them in cash because I'm not about to hand somebody my money just for interest rates. It's stupid. Um, another thing, like I'm very specific with where I do my grocery shopping. I don't shop at places like if you are in like the Southeast, um, like Publix, Harris Teeter. We have a Harris Teeter. Very, that is our closest grocery store, but I won't shop there because I'm very aware that they hike up their prices for convenience for like a nice grocery store. I'm like, honestly, all day in food line, give me a great experience. And they aren't, you know, making me pay, God, I don't know, like $7 for soy milk. I'm just, mm, I, I'm, I can't do it. It li- makes me sick to my stomach. I can't do it knowing it's really, it's knowing that something isn't worth what they're charging. I'm like, I know that this isn't worth what you're charging. And I know that you're, you like are, I'm paying for like pretty packaging or a pretty experience or something like that. And I would rather that money go into traveling. I'd rather that money go into like, you know, and me going honestly, like shopping for clothes, like something else. I don't want to be spending that extra cash on my milk. You know what I mean? same thing like I don't shop at CVS and Walgreens and those type of like convenience places because you're paying for convenience um even like the toiletries I won't buy my toiletries there they're so much more expensive I've started I'll get my toiletries from like Walmart um sometimes Aldi Uh, grocery stores typically if it's not Walmart grocery stores typically hike prices up for cleaning products and toiletries uh so a lot of times I'll get those like straight from the brand website even Amazon you can save some money there you know just being like choosing wisely, like where I'm putting my money, you know what I mean? And then meal planning as well. So we started meal planning with no meat or very like limited meat. That's not going to be for everybody, but I will say that has significantly decreased our grocery bill. Um, And then also meal planning with coordinated ingredients. If you don't want to be like me and like obsess over, like, it's like a weird game for me and I'll go through like what ingredients we have and like, what can I make? And, you know, that may not be fun for everybody. A really easy way to keep your grocery bill down without having to do like a lot of thought is pick a genre of food. Like maybe you have like a week where you're making mostly Mexican dishes. Maybe you have a week where you're doing mostly Asian dishes or, you know, Italian dishes, something like that, because those type of things are going to have very similar ingredients. So instead of buying five different ingredients for four different recipes, you're buying a total of seven that each of those recipes is going to need. You know what I mean? Um, Something else that like I enacted pretty early on um, when I was thinking about, okay, like what do I want to spend my money on is saving for things that I really cared about. And I'm not saying just like, oh, I want to buy a car. I need to save for a car. Like 
travel was something that I did not want to give up. That's not something that I really wanted to negotiate on. So I was like, okay, well, like, how do I afford travel? So I created a savings account specifically for travel because if the opportunity came, I didn't want to, that money to have to come from my monthly expenses. Like I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm not going to go out to dinner this month because we have a trip coming up next month. I didn't want to sacrifice in that way. But if I was putting a little bit away every month, it's not like I was going on a trip every month. So by the time I got to spring break or a summer trip like that, I had money saved up and it almost felt like a free trip, to be honest, because that money in my head, I didn't feel guilty because that, that's what that was for. That's travel money. Couldn't be spent on anything. Of course it could, but like in my head, it couldn't be spent on any anything else. So that's specifically what that was for. So if I wanted to take a trip and it was going to cost, you know, $1,500 and I wanted to go next month, I didn't all of a sudden have to scrounge up $1,500. I had saved $1,500 from putting $50, dollars $150 away every month. You know what I mean? So I don't feel guilty because that money's there and it's there for travel only. Now, are these things for everyone? No, it's not going to be for everything, everyone. Some things that I do, you might hate to do, but the point is you have an active role in your finances and nobody can tell you what to spend your money on. I don't want you to feel guilty for the Starbucks, for the Target trips, for the clothing things. If you're doing that every once in a while, that's not what's going to have you saving your money or building up your emergency savings account or anything like that. Anyway, it's the things that are your monthly expenses. Take a look at your monthly expenses and what is what is taking up most of that, you know, rent. See where, if you can, you know, adjust your car payment is your, oh my God, guys, your car insurance. Oh, some of you are paying so much for car insurance. I just heard this poor girl this week and she's paying like, oh my God, something ridiculous. I was like $600 every month or something like stupid like that like every three months I don't know dumb like guys you do you don't have to pay that much for car insurance like just just call the car insurance companies and get some quotes and like you know maybe negotiate a little be like look this is what I want to pay like how can we make that happen um when I switched car insurance off of my parents I did like some shopping and called three of them Geico was the best heckled with them a little bit. Um, if you want like a reference, like I pay $600 every six months. Now that's going to change based on your state. It's going to change based on your gender. Unfortunately, um, it's going to change based on how many like wrecks you've had. I have a very good driving record. I'm a girl. So that helps me. And then we were also submitting my transcripts. If you are in college or high school and you aren't submitting your transcripts to your car insurance companies, you need to do that. Cause they will hike that down. But it's things like that. Like who wants to pay for car insurance? Like nobody wants to do that. So then if it's something that's making you like, Ugh, and you don't feel good about the price that you're paying, see how you can hack your way out of it. But if going to out to eat is important to you, then be cognizant of that and like find where in your budget you can manipulate to allow for that lifestyle. Play a game with yourself. Where can you hack it so you can literally build a life that's perfect for you and exactly what you want to be spending your money on? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I feel like we went through a lot. I had like my notes. It was kind of overwhelming for me. So I hope that I did not overwhelm you. Probably did. Um, but if you have any questions, DM me. Go to the Table Podcast Instagram. Shoot me a DM. Uh, comment on the post. Like whatever you need to do. I'm happy to like, oh my gosh, I love voice messages. So if you want to like voice message back and forth, whatever. We can totally do that. Totally fine. Um, but as always, if you like the podcast, share, like, review all the things, tell your friends and let them know that if they listen to this podcast, they will gain an internet grandma and a best friend all in one. What a great deal. I love you so, so very much. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.